Greetings. You are listening to Marriage Underdogs Radio Show, and I'm your host, Chris A. Matthews. I'm so excited to bring you guys another episode. We have two phenomenal guests on today. I would like to introduce Phil and Lynn Brown, who are marriage and life coaches, and they also have a coaching service that tailors to helping couples better their relationships. Thank you guys for being here today. Thanks so much, Chris. Good to be here. It's good to be here. It's great awesome. to see your smiling face. Yeah. Yeah, same here. And, you know, just to let the viewers know or the audience know, we met um, actually at the top of the year, um, just through some general network. And I love the programs you guys offer. And before we get into your services, please just share a little bit about your journey and, you know, years married and just any highlights, because I believe it can be inspirational for our listeners to hear stories of couples that have just gone through so many different seasons and they've still been able to make marriage work. Mm, so good. let me just say from the outset, I love this, the title of your show, Marriage Underdogs. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people might think, oh, they're coaches, Phil and Lynn are coaches and they're trainers. They train people how to be married and so on. So where does that fit in? We are classic marriage underdogs. So um, the truth of the matter is that mm -hmm. if um, we had four, we basically um, were had four behaviors or were our history, um, there were four issues that um, people would look at and say, well, hang on, each of those issues would have predicted divorce mm, absolutely. had it been any one of those issues. So let me just, I'll name them off quickly. Number one, we live with each other. We cohabited with each other for six years before yeah, we got married. That. Was it seven? We were common law marriage, if you think <laughs> about it. It was more like seven. It's true. Yeah. And, and, that, and, and, that's, we, and that's one, and that's a popular one, by the way, too. I get a lot of slack oh, for that one, but I'm just saying oh, yeah. research, right? Hey, oh, hey, but oh. we know, right? That divorce, the people who cohabit divorce at a higher rate than those who don't mm -hmm. when they get married. That's number one. Number two, and I think your your professionals and, and a lot of the people that you work with will understand this because they understand the language. Mm -hmm. But of the four uh, behaviors that predict divorce 87, 88% of the time, they're called the four horsemen of the apocalypse by mm -hmm. John Gottman. Mm -hmm. Um we exhibited three of those, mm. three of them. So, so you have cont contempt, stonewalling, defensiveness, uh, criticism, which one, and criticism. Which yeah, one so you criticism, contempt, and defensiveness were the three that we mm -hmm. were, we were, we had PhDs in those. Mm. So, <laughs> I mean, we, so the fact of the matter is, so we had two strikes against us. The third strike against us was we were very happily married uh, we'd been married for 17 years and then God just knocked on our, on our door and said, by the way, I know you guys want to have kids, but you can't have kids because you've tried and the fertility, you mm -hmm. couldn't have them. So we adopted our children at age 49 from yep. Russia, but here's, that's the good news. And those, they're great kids. I mean, they're adults now and they're awesome. Two of them, a, a brother and biological brother and sister. But mm -hmm. the truth of the matter is if you look at the statistics for adoptive parents, Adoptive parents divorce at an alarming, alarmingly high rate compared to those that don't adopt their, uh, children. Mm. So number, so that's three, three strikes against us. We're mm -hmm. we're getting close to the marriage. We are marriage underdogs. Yeah, you know, two or more, you you're on it. So you got yes. Yeah, so number number four is a, it's a bit of a soft one, but it was true. We um, I was a I was unsaved. Um, you know, when Lynn and I met, Lynn had been, a, had known the Lord for a while. But uh, if I can say I was a, what I would call a carnal Christian because I was living with him as a Christian, mm. knowing, I think in my head only, not my heart, that that was wrong, you know, but thinking, oh, but I love him. I remember saying that. <laughs> And you weren't as obedient as you would have desired. No, mm -hmm. I wasn't. I was So a week, so Lynn, basically, but, I, I had um, proposed to Lynn, um, and she said yes, and we were going to get married. And then 
things just our 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 relationship, which really was a house of cards anyways, just mm -hmm. blew up. Mm -hmm. And we separated for a few months. And then God, but God, but he God. brought us back together. It, it's it's a story unto itself, but I want to make a point here. When I proposed to Lynn for the second time, I just thought, you know, hey, listen, she's going to say yes. I mean, I, I must be God's gift to, to, to manhood, right? <laughs> and she looked at me and she made the comment. She said, Phil, I'm only going to marry you for and if you do two things. Number one, you need to know the Lord as I know the Lord. You mm. need to have a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And that kind of shocked me when she said that. The second thing she said was, you need, we need uh, marriage counseling, premarital counseling, mm. um, because we don't know how to even talk to each other. Wow. So I agreed to that. And a week before we got married, the Lord and I had a discussion and uh, I just gave myself to him. And here's the, here's the key point. And this would probably be the, this is the fourth reason why I think that we are truly our marriage underdogs. We were really not living what would be termed a Christian life for those first few years. Mm -hmm. A Christian life is defined by most studies that look at divorce between those who are Christian and those who are not. Right. Would say that a Christian life is a couple that is going to church weekly, mm -hmm. studying a Bible daily, and involved in some sort of community or uh, church so, fellowship. Yeah. Yep. Uh, where they're studying the Bible together, or they're just meeting together, or they're studying a part of the Bible. A collective um, union of people. About it. Exactly. And to be honest with you, in those first few years, we weren't doing really any of those. We started going to church regularly. So that's four strikes against us, because we know mm -hmm. that those who don't follow a Christian path like that, like we did, divorce at a much higher rate. Now, now, so, now I want to I want to ask Lynn a question, right? Because Phil, you did a great job of breaking down four core characteristics that defined you as underdogs. But there was a pivotal point, a, a pivotal point in your story when you said that Lynn created a foundation of expectation. She mentioned two things that you had to be saved and develop a, a, a relationship with God, Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, but also the going to marriage counseling. So I want to learn more, Lynn, on how did you get those two characteristics? Like where they come from? And then having the assertion to be able to present those to Phil. Well, I I was saved in a Baptist church. I so I I was getting the word. I, I was in a Bible study, I remember with some women, and I was I was saved at 22 or something. They were older. They were married. I wasn't. And you I had, remember you had a, a Christian foundation from the beginning then. Um, I did. I did. Yeah. At 20. So you, 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 you came into the relationship with Phil already with a Christian foundation. Yes, I did. And I, but I was always a bit of a rebel. I'm going to do it. My, I, you know, I, I used to say later on that God was my savior, not my Lord, because mm. I realized like the Baptist pastor I had is a great guy um, that I was in later in this group that, you know, Christianity wasn't fun. You couldn't do all the fun things anymore, you know? And I, I was thinking about, I mean, that's how I kind of believe, but in this Bible study that I was in with that church, a lot of the women were complaining that they were married to men that weren't saved and they were miserable. Mm. And I thought, no way, I am not marrying anybody that isn't a Christian because I want to start out in right foot. I don't want to be like those women. Gotcha. So <laughs> you had, really you had like, examples of what not to do then. Yes. And, and, and I was then, young in it. I'm yeah. the only, I'm the first person in my family to be saved. Gotcha. So, so you, I wasn't so from a background. Yeah, I wasn't. I, I went to church. We went to a church, but. It, it didn't go anywhere with anybody in my family. It but you didn't still, but you still had to have like this courage to present that to feel. So, so where yes. did this courage come from to be able to be so clear and concise? Because Phil didn't have to guess or read your mind. You put it out there. Yeah, I, I guess. Well, I did. Um, before we, when we broke up at one point, before we got married, 
I went to Florida and I remember it with my brother for a couple months to work down there, whatever. And I remember a girlfriend of mine who was in the same church I'm talking about back in Connecticut, that um, she knew I needed to get back to Connecticut. And so she gave me the money even to get back. She just was really great mentor. But she, in her gentle way, convinced me that what we were doing was wrong, living together. Mm -hmm. She didn't say it that way. She just... It's amazing. I don't even, it was the Lord. You had, you had good people in your corner. That's it. This mentor of yours was able to provide insight that didn't appear to be judgmental and you received it and it got you in a position where you could be a co-leader in the relationship and present to feel what you both needed to build a foundation on a marriage that has continued to last. How many years? This September will be 40. 40 years. So those yeah. that are listening understand that this isn't just something you put together, <laughs> concocted, and it's just, we hope it'll work. I mean, this is 40 years of proven methodologies of being able to have a relationship, a marriage built on a foundation of Jesus Christ. And more importantly, the four characteristics you mentioned earlier, Phil, as an underdog. And I want to ask you, Phil, when Lynn came to you with these two non-negotiables, what was your initial impression? And then what led to you being uh, yeah. one that received it to and go forth with it? Well, to be honest with you, Lynn, we, had arra- we hadn't seen each other for months. We had broken up. I was in Florida. Right? You were in Florida, but you had come back. Yeah. And I frankly didn't want anything to do with Lynn like, mm-hmm. uh, again. Because, That's a story. Uh, because <laughs> when we broke up, we, weren't, we, we were to the point where we were punishing each other in our language. Mm-hmm. We weren't treating each other like really even friends. And so I didn't want to see anything to do with Lynn. She had contacted me and said, Phil, I'm back from Florida. Um, do you want to... Uh, get together. I just would like to talk to you. And I thought that was a bad idea because I thought it might, you know, I didn't want to go to something into another relationship that I didn't think was a good thing for either one of us. Mm -hmm. So she said, no, I just want to talk. And so we met in a place, a very rural place. I remember that day in May. It was a beautiful, beautiful day. And Lynn got out of her car. And I I mean, I don't want to be over spiritual. But this is what I saw. This is what happened. She got out of her car and maybe it was the sunlight behind her because we faced west. But there was something around her that glowed. And the, she, when she came and she talked, there was a humility. That rebel that she referred to that she used to be was starting to be smoothed out and, and removed. And, and she wasn't like that at all. The conversation we had was very... I was shocked and I'm, I'm just sitting and listening to this. So when she, so, um, you know, weeks, a few weeks later, when I began to kind of, once again, I was unsaved. I'd had a number of experience. God was getting a hold of me to do a few things. You know, there's always a journey before mm-hmm. salvation. Right. And, you know, what I love about the retrospectoscope is that we get to see God's footprints sometimes mm-hmm. in the journey. Yeah. Um, but I wasn't, you know, I really didn't want to get back together with her, but there was a, a, an attraction. And I think that was the fragrance of Christ in Lynn now. Mm. So you didn't I, see, I, so you didn't see Lynn anymore. You saw through Lynn and found the Holy Spirit. So it was more yeah, than yeah, just yeah. your wife. You saw God leading you toward something greater than just the person. Right. But, I, but Chris, I didn't have a grid for that. I mean, I was kind of raised in a church, but I was raised in what we would call the social gospel. Like that was. It wasn't, it wasn't spirit. It wasn't, uh, God wasn't in that church. Let's just put it that way. And so, uh, in fact, I had walked away from the church because I was, I had seen such hypocrisy at a young age. So I didn't have a grid for what I was looking at. I was just, and you know, as a physician, I'm an observer. And so I can't deny what I was seeing. That was the observation I made. But there was an attraction there that God, I think, put in me. It was what we would call the fragrance of Christ yeah, that the Apostle Paul said. talks about that I think that just drew me to, towards her. So we decided to start seeing each other and we dated again and we dated. And then um, I just felt like 
uh, it was time for me to to uh, propose for the second time. And, um, and you know, we had friends that were saying, oh, you, sh you know, this isn't going to work, blah, 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 blah. But, I, you know, sometimes you get a conviction and you know, because you know, I mean, I'm not, I I'm all for getting the counsel of many counselors, but mm -hmm. they better be wise counselors mm -hmm. and they better be godly mm -hmm. wise counselors. Right. And I didn't really have that. And so it was God that was drawing me. And so when I proposed again, I was shocked at what Lynn said. I, I just thought she was going to say, of course, I want to marry you. You know, you are this and that. And I didn't hear that at so, all. So Lynn, so Lynn not only became what you wanted, it sounds like there was a transformation into what you needed. And, and that's, that's, that's the truth. That's that's beautiful. Now, I want to I want to segue to something you mentioned uh, earlier. I know the listeners, I didn't put this on your title, but Phil is also a retired ER physician. And when you look at trauma care workers, mm -hmm. they tend to have a higher rate of divorce. When you mm -hmm. look at yep. medical professionals in general, even counselors, right? Like, you know, I was in, in school for marriage and family therapy. I recall one of my professors pulling me aside and saying, hey, you have to stay connected to your wife because marriage and family therapist students have a high divorce rate. Mm, and wow. the same for trauma workers, doctors. So I want to ask Lynn, help the listeners. And, and, and this question for you too, Phil, help the listeners understand what you guys were able to do during this career journey, why you were a physician and what supports were in play. And just, you know, list about two to three major supports that allowed you to be a healthcare worker in one of the most stressful positions, but yet still sustained a marriage 40 plus years. Wow. I support, we had our church. Um, I would say though, the biggest thing that changed everything, because I, I had a lot of wounds from my past. Mm. And so before we became coaches of marriage and, and uh, life coach, we we got healing, went out to, we started out with going, I, I needed to get healing. I knew from my church, they said, I did a ministry there. But uh, for me to be able to accept his long hours, and I have a, a need of time is my love language, you know, and I didn't have a lot of time with him. That's another story. So um, we went out to a place called the Elijah House out west mm -hmm. and to get healing for ourselves, our emotions, our wounds or whatever, especially me. And had so much amazing healing transformation out there that we we came back, we realized this is what we want to do together. We want to go back and get the training and help others. So it wasn't marriage at that time, but help others to get free and healed. And so we did that for a good 20 years, but that helped me. That was a big support and being in a community of people who also did that. We right. trained up people and we were in a group that, that really, um, that really, that healing was so important because sometimes you could try to make your spouse everything. They've got to meet all your needs and they can't. And so, you know, and then you're never home and, <laughs> You've got kids maybe by that point and you know so so, so, so what you so what you're really saying in and for those listening just to kind of to highlight Lynn right. you and Phil went and got individual healing you processed your own past wounds your own exactly. past traumas and I, I use this phrase a lot in my work you have to open up to heal up that's right and you that's opened right. yourselves up to your that's personal right. healing Right. That's right. And then that allowed for you to have the patience and the acceptance of long yeah. hours, the acceptance right. that there may be different things that you might need to submit to, to be able to support mm -hmm. the tough stints that come with a partner that has a job such as an ER physician. Right. And I think that's so important to echo. And I want to, you know, get you to share Phil as well on that process of being able to heal yourself first before you attempt to try to fix someone else. You both did that personal work first. Right. 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 So the, you know, I think what happens is 
when you do that personal work, um, you, there are two things that happen. You're beginning mm -hmm. to see healing in yourself. You're beginning to see the results of that. But there's, there's, you know, the whole concept of empathy in marriage mm -hmm. can be a really difficult concept for couples to get. It's empathy is definitely you and I, we all know is trainable, but one of the best ways to train it is to go through that process of healing with that other person. Mm -hmm. And in that exactly what opened up our eyes, we went to an intensive in the Elijah house for four mm -hmm. days. And the truth be told, we, we were doing it primarily for Lynn, but when I feel that- talk about, can you, can you back up and talk about the Elijah house? Cause I want to give better understanding of what- sure that program and that process look like for right, those listening. Right. So it's a place where people who have emotional and spiritual wounds mm -hmm. can get healed. Mm -hmm. And they have, and they have a very, they, their ministry is got a lot of tools in their tool belt that are mm -hmm. very godly tools mm -hmm. that have shown that they have taken from a variety of places that have shown over many years to have great fruit in healing people. Hmm. So we knew we needed to have that, but we didn't, we didn't know what it meant. We had no, we had no, once again, no grid for what they were doing. So we get out there and God hmm. is doing a work with me on the way out because we had to fill out an eight, nine page application. And it was hmm. so detailed and it had such great questions to ask me. I started to do an inward journey yeah. of who I was. So they were priming so, you before you even got out there by way of that. Got that. Got it. And absolutely. Within the first, I remember Ivanka, who is our, our minister for those four days, she asked us each a question, the very beginning of our ministry. She said, Lynn, what would you like to see? What would you like to work on here while you're here? Mm -hmm. She said a few things. And then she turned to me and she said, Phil, what would you like to work on while you're here? And God had given me two dreams mm -hmm. that, that, basically showed me uh, there were some things that needed to be dealt with. Mm -hmm. And literally within 20 minutes, I got healed from something that was an emotional wound that I had carried for probably most of my life. Mm -hmm. And I got I, in 20 minutes wow. and I'm in this place. And Man. here Lynn is seeing me in a, in a way she's never seen me. The I'm in, I'm, I'm, I'm sobbing. Yeah. I'm sobbing through this. You were this completely because open I, then. Because, yeah, right. Very and open. and and mm -hmm. let me just say something. Jesus was so much a part of that healing in that mm -hmm. session. I when we got out of that first session, I, we looked at each other, and honestly, mm -hmm. they they told us to take the afternoons off because you had to process this stuff. And the first processing we did was, we not only need more of this, but we wonder if God is calling us in, into this. Mm. Yeah, we both to have be prayer ministers to be prayer ministers like this. Yeah. So we both have hearts mm. uh, and giftings that would be a, would be very uh, amenable to helping people either in medicine or as Lynn, she was in English as a second language instructor. So you have mm. to have an empathy and an and, and an identity with right. people from other countries to be able to do that. Yeah. Um, so he had given that already. So he had prepared the way already. We just didn't know it. Yeah. So that was the beginning of the journey. Yeah. Now, now talk about that. I want to, I want to, you know, segue more into the work you're currently doing, right? We've, we've sure. taken time to gain a really good understanding of your foundation and yep. <laughs> what you both experienced at the beginning of your relationship and the transformation. And it sounds like the intimacy that you have with Jesus Christ and your faith has flowed through the entire relationship and from that moment at the Elijah house, you you both were called to do this work to help other couples. So give the right. listeners a better understanding of what that looks like on a day-to-day -day basis, the work you're doing now that you were called to do to help other couples. Well, we use, for example, that Elijah house tool. Now we used to just, we used, used to for anybody, it wasn't just couples, any person who wanted to get healing of their past generational whatever um but now we realize that's a good tool for couples all the we went on to get other trainings besides elijah house through the year 20 something years mm -hmm. that we just saw yeah that's good where this is good you know whatever can help on your toolkit like, 
Yeah. 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 So you, so what God has done. But now you know, we use it in, in coaching. Our journey has been like, have you ever watched a bat go after its next meal at night? So the flight of a bat right. is like this, like this, like this, like this. Finally, they get that meal, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that's the journey that we took really to get to where we are now. God, mm -hmm. over the years, has put tool, uh, tools in our tool bag. In fact, he once called it. He told me it was a physician's bag. And I said, <laughs> I don't get it, Lord. He says, remember, I'm the great physician. Ooh, mm -hmm. So nice. he taught us what tools to use when, which mm -hmm. was a real Holy Spirit moment for us. Now, now but, go back to that real quick, because that was important. It's not just what you said, the particular tools, but when to use the tools. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. And which tool. Which tool and, which tool. and when. So we were having experience. So we, as Lynn said, we used to minister to individuals out of our own home. We had lots of people and coming in, our in church. and in our church. And one, there was a week period where we were having no success with a particular couple. Mm -hmm. And 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 she had, I think the wife had come for help and he was coming to support her. It wasn't a marriage uh, coaching thing. And um, we got nowhere with it. And I remember one more, the next morning, it was a Saturday morning, praying and asking the Lord. I said, what's going on here, Lord? You trained us in this, these particular tools. And he said, well, uh, who knows when to use that tool better than the great physician? And I said, whoops. So that changed our ministry dramatically because we had a large tool bag with a lot of tools. But then he, he began to show us. So for this person and that mm -hmm. person, it could happen before the ministry had happened. It could be in prayer two days as we were praying for them. He would say this or right in the middle of the ministry. So that it, changed it, it, things Phil, a lot. What you're saying aligns so well with why well, I made the choice to go into marriage and family therapy because marriage and family therapists, we're trained on all these different modalities and theories. And I use the example or the, the metaphor of golf. When you're playing golf, you use a certain club depending on where the ball lands and that club is designed to hit the ball a certain distance. So when you're driving off from the tee, oh. you're using the driver to hit it far. But when you're close to the hole, you're using the putter to tap it a little bit further than it needs to go into the hole. So what you're saying makes so much sense because the models and theories that counselors use, coaches use the same approach with theories, models, and training that they may have. And the primary difference may be one goes back and does more retroactive work versus the other may be looking solely at how to present issues or excuse me, present solutions to the issues present. So coaching right. is more in the moment. What do we need to do now to create an immediate outcome by way of tools, counseling, going back into the past and, and digging up some of those wounds that might not have been treated. And they're both important. And, and, I, and I think it's, it's good for people to hear counseling and coaching are different tools. Yeah. Yes, and definitely. Using the, great, the great physician to acknowledge when you may need which one. And I'm, I'm, right. a, I'm an advocate of both. I, I believe yes. that you can utilize you counseling and coaching for different stages and phases of that relationship and where you are in life as well. So I'm just so glad that you brought that up. Now, for all of the listeners out there that want to get in contact with you or learn more about any future projects that you have or current projects, please, please give us that information. Sure. Mm. Sure. So the best we are on LinkedIn. Okay. So you'll find us on Philip Brown, Lynn Brown. We each have different LinkedIn uh, sites. Mm. We also um, are the best way to reach us would be on our, on my, um, uh, email. So it's Phil, P-H-I-L, at, and it's spelled areyoutotallyalive.com. So A-R-E-Y-O-U-T-O-T-A-L-L-Y, alive.com. And so that gets- Areyoutotallyalive.com. Dot com. Yeah. And that gets you right into our email. And, 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 um, you know, if somebody has a question or a concern or they want to have a conversation, we we do what we call a free consultation call, which basically is designed for that person. We spend 45 minutes to an hour with that. Usually it's a couple 
And then mm -hmm. we determine basically whether it's a good fit for all for all of us. And then how to, if they want to go forward, how to do that. So that assessment process is really important. That screening process to determine. Yeah. And and then what I love about what you guys do, you 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 definitely put the work in to continue to grow your toolkit. And yes. and that's special because when you're passionate about helping people the right way, you're you're, you're always going to be a life learner. And yes. I, I can attest, I, I found you guys on LinkedIn as well. And you guys do a phenomenal job of posting content. And can you share with the listeners your avatar client, certain characteristics that tend to be better in alignment with your clients? Sure. Lynn, do you want to? Yeah, I mean... We've found that it, because as, especially I think if Phil is a profession, very much professional as a doctor, I was a teacher, so I am too, but we both understand professional marriages, couple, you know, and the different stresses and, you know, good points, of course. Um, so it doesn't have, it's not the age, it's, it's professional couples who um, usually haven't been married that long or pre-marriage before. We want to get to to talk to people when they're in the big, maybe the, we, we have a couple, some couples that are like married three years, for example. So the foundational period. You know, to, yeah. get, to yeah. get to the foundation because the foundation, so that if you're 20 years on and you're never resolved and there's bitterness and it's, it's, deep -rooted. it's, a, Harder to do, as you probably, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, uh, it's deep rooted issues. But, yeah, we're gonna call you, Chris. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, and, well, and, and, and that makes you make a great point because I share with couples the first five to seven years, you're really just digging a foundation. You think about a yeah. skyscraper, the deeper the foundation, the taller the building. And yeah, when you're exactly. signing up for marriage for life. You need a pretty deep foundation so those steel beams can be anchored into the bedrock of True. the earth, right? Yeah. So True. what I'm hearing you say, you you guys enjoy working with couples that are within that first, you know, five to seven year mark because there's still some, yeah. uh, it's still malleable. You can still yeah. kind of uh, create a, a foundation to withhold That's a, a marriage point. and they haven't been rooted or plastered into their ways yet. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And and also I'll say, as you probably know too, we both have realized right from the beginning they both need to be committed. Absolutely. To really want to change and to put in that effort. Um, both, not just one. Absolutely. I, we've seen that that is so important. Yeah, and, and I might add, so Christian professional couples, and I say Christian yeah. because yeah. a lot because I would say a good number of our tools, uh mm -hmm. We we the, our tool bag is 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 a pretty decent sized tool bag, but we certainly use Christian tools where uh, it's very it's so important for a couple to at least identify and understand at least a basic have a basic understanding of Christianity and and yeah. they, you know listen um, we're coaching a couple now who she was saved but. To be honest with you, she didn't have much of a salvation experience whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And, you know, advance, uh, you know, a few months and her Christianity is just uh, her her walk with the Lord is a yeah. powerful walk. And they're a great couple. I mean, mm -hmm. so, you know, they don't have to have been Christians forever or, or even known when they became Christians. But I think that's important Absolutely. because that's where God has gifted us as well. Yeah. And, and, I, and, I, and I love the fact you've defined your target population because there's so many people in the helping field. There are a lot of people that work with couples. And I'm a believer. We all need to take time to figure out what's a good fit. And yeah. if you're listing criteria, professionals who have been within the first five to seven years of marriage, who also okay. have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. That, yeah. That's 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 important. Um, yeah. So be before we go, I want to make sure if you had any closing uh, statements or words because you guys have just been phenomenal. Uh, I'm I'm so glad I've had you on because your story and you know 40 years and counting that in itself is a testament 
of you both choosing to do the personal work. And I'm thankful that God called you to help others and you're paying it forward as well. Yeah. Mm. Th thanks, Chris. And we, we've enjoyed being on. We yeah. really enjoyed being on with you. Any time we spend with you, Chris, is, is, uh, <laughs> is worth its weight in gold. Hey, um, I, think just, I appreciate it. Just to close, I think we believe, and, and it's been our experience that, you know, it's a level play. Marriage is a level playing field. None of us. And what I mean by that is none of us were trained how to be married. We might have gathered some to some tools or maybe some ways of dealing with one another from our parents if we were fortunate. Right. But most of us did not had no idea. And many of us didn't have good role models for right. parents. That's so true. The, it's a level playing field. Nobody very, nobody really knows how to be trained to be married. That's just the truth. But you and I and Lynn and your wa beautiful wife as well know that marriage is trainable mm -hmm. and it doesn't take years to do that. It takes it takes some commitment, mm -hmm. time and the right people to come aside you to bring that foundation so you can move forward. And I think that that's the hope that every couple can have if if they decide you don't have to wait to have a bad marriage to get help. Yeah. We say to people, we say, mm -hmm. if you've got a marriage that maybe it, you're in an engaged place and you, you, you're not even married, that's a great time to get help, to get trained. If you have an unstable marriage, get help, get trained. If you have a good marriage, but there's something missing, get help, get trained. If you have a, a very good marriage, you know what? God has his best for you. So get help and get trained. And, and Phil, you, you bring me to one of my favorite quotes. It's better to prepare and prevent than repair and repent. Oh, so, <laughs> boy. That's quotable. I got to quote good. you there. Definitely. Uh, Lynn, final words. I, I, thank, I thank you so much for being on. What would you like to leave the listeners with? I, uh, yeah, I want to just say there is hope because I, of course, didn't go into it, my whole story, how I got that glowing um, when he met me again after we had broken up. But I thank God for my pastor at that time that prayed with me and said, I think you need to get closer to God right now mm. and not just pray to get back together again. That changed me totally. Mm. That was the key, I think. Yeah. It was getting closer to God, whether we ever got back together or not, way back. And God did want us together. This really makes me almost cry because he did. He didn't, I didn't have to force his hand and manipulate God. Or anything. Yeah. I just, I, I, I think that that whole, I, I just thank God for, for our marriage and, and for that. If Man. that hadn't happened, if that had not happened, if it's, I, I don't know. His, you know, his faith. <laughs> it's amazing. You know, even Unfaithful and hasn't been there. Can I? No, I don't mean necessarily unfaithful in your marriage, but unfaithful to be obedient to something or something he's asked us to do, or not even know what that is in in marriage or individually. God is faithful. I love that, and that's a testimony that it's God's faithfulness that not only kept us together but brought us to where we are right. now. Right, and, and we're and we have nothing but thanks for that. And there's hope. And it's and it's and it's it's magnified by way of just all of the work that you're doing with couples. And I'm just thankful to have had the opportunity to uh, learn from you all 40, 40 years of marriage. And one of the major takeaways from our conversation that I hope resonates with all the listeners is that you have to be willing to do the personal work first and have that personal healing. Yes. And it took you both opening up so you could heal up together That's and good. the ability to continue to get better and to grow. And what you were saying, Phil, about how couples out there listening, no matter what stage or phase you are in or season you're in, in your marriage, there's always an opportunity to get better. So I just want to thank you guys again, uh, Phil and Lynn Brown, marriage coaches, uh, Brown Coaching Services, please make sure you guys find them on LinkedIn. 
Um, they have some phenomenal content and I hope to have you guys back on the show again. We definitely yeah. have to do this again. Um, it's, it's been a pleasure. And um, for those that have been listening, you've, you've been tuning into marriage underdogs radio show and I'm your host, Chris A. Matthews. Please visit us on Apple podcasts and Spotify, leave comments, reviews, likes, and uh, we look forward to uh, providing you guys with another episode next week. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Thanks. We loved it.